Welcome to Solo Travel Blog, baby. If you want to see a life-changing Japanese pancake, you've come to the right place. I was cruising the main streets of Nara, Japan when I came across this restaurant with some sweet-ass plastic food models outside. It didn't take me long to realize the food at this place looked fucking incredible, so I decided to head on in that joint. So I pointed out a picture in the menu and the next thing I knew, the pancake maestro was stirring up some batter like a seasoned pro. Truth be told, I was getting all hot and bothered just looking at that batter and wow, just wow, check out that early stage pancake right there. The thing ain't even cooked yet and I already want to slam it down the hatch. So let's get some close up action on that batter and check it out, we got a lot of cabbage in that batter. We got a real lot of cabbage in fact, we even got some red specks of something in there and we also got some noodles waiting in the wings. Now a little while later, the pancake maestro came back and threw some meat on that griddle. Nice, got some sweet ass sizzle action going down over here. Flash forward to the future, that meat is getting cooked and some pockets of steam are shooting out from that pancake like crazy. Now here's where shit started getting serious, we got the meat on top of the pancake, now we got the noodles on the griddle, she's putting those noodles on top of the pancake as well. We got some carb on meat on carb action and oh man, she just flipped that bad boy to the other side. Seems to me like we got the makings of a nice fucking pancake over here. Then after a while she flipped that puppy again and as you can see we've got some slight burn action but for the most part everything looks well done. Now after cooking was finished, the maestro gestured at the different sauces and condiments in the general order that I should put them on the pancake, then she got the hell out of there. In other words, she left me on my own, baby, so I figured I'd put some okonomiyaki sauce on that bad boy. I gotta say, this thing I'm using over here seems kinda like a paintbrush and I feel like I'm painting a modern art masterpiece in this bitch. Now I don't exactly know if I'm supposed to drench this bad boy or just put a light coating on, I guess it's up to personal preference. Well, seems to me like that's enough of that sauce, so I grabbed that lid, put that puppy back on, and then I got ready for the next condiment. Now I think the first sauce I put on was the spicy sauce and this other one is the sweet sauce, it says ama on the side. Probably the main idea is to choose one or the other sauce but I'm gonna put both sauces on my pancake. I'm having it my way today, I've been working hard 24 7, I've been sweating my balls off, let's just say I deserve to have it my own way. So I started slathering that sweet sauce on that pancake like a madman on a mission. Anyway, you get the drill, so I'm gonna skip to the next part, I got some seaweed flakes and some fish flakes on deck over here. After all, as everyone knows, ain't no pancake complete without some fish flakes. Just like grandma used to make. So I grabbed those mini tongs and I was trying to drop that seaweed on there all nice and even like, but it was kinda hard to control those mini tongs. Long story short, I just ended up dropping huge ass clumps of seaweed flakes all over the place on that pancake. I guess each bite of the pancake is gonna be like a roll of the dice in terms of the seaweed department, but that's okay, I like to keep life interesting sometimes. Something about a random chance of a seaweed flavor explosion in my mouth reminds me that I'm truly alive. Now as you can see, I'm piling those fish flakes on top of that pancake, they're dancing in the heat, and this pancake is looking more buck wild than I ever thought possible. That's shaping up to be a pretty fucking nice pancake if I do say so myself. Now last condiment on deck, we got some Japanese mayo over here in what appears to be a highly specialized bottle. Let me pour it out to show you what I mean. Nice fucking mayo right there, check it out baby cakes. That's some picture perfect mayo action. And man oh man, check out that Japanese pancake, it almost looks too good to eat. That thing is looking magnifique as fuck. So I grabbed that huge ass spatula, started to cut myself some pieces of pancake. I was getting mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and of course sexually prepared to chow down on this pancake. And wow, just wow, I ain't no food expert but even for me it's plain to see that right there is one delish motherfucking dish. It looks like a pretty good meal and I'm getting borderline aroused to take the first bite. So in what can only be described as a hunger crazed frenzy, I started picking at that pancake trying to rip off a chunk like my life depended on it. 
The second I got that piece in isolation, I jammed it deep inside my mouth, and man, oh fucking man, I can't even believe what I'm tasting right now. I mean, when I got that pancake dancing around on my palate, it felt like a fucking Christmas tree lit up inside my cranium. To top it off, my heart started racing like a mad bull in heat. I guess what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is that right there is a nice fucking pancake. It's a life-changing pancake, a motivational pancake. This right here is like the Tony Robbins of pancakes. This pancake inspires me to become a better man. In other words, nice fucking pancake right there. Now the taste of this pancake almost defies description, but I better at least give it a try. I owe it to you, the viewer, to give it my best shot, and in some strange way, I owe it to myself. So how to describe this taste? It's like an avalanche of ooey gooey, oh so subtle mayo flavor topped off with some gravy action. But not the kind of gravy you've come to know and love. This is a zesty fresh gravy with a sort of tangy sweet flavor going on. Now those saucy flavors are mixed with that ever so subtle fish flake flavor. I'd say I don't taste those fish flakes as much as I feel the texture of those things rolling around inside my mouth, all dry compared to the sauces that surround them. It's pretty much a buck wild textural contrast we got popping off deep inside my mouth. It's the age old combination of dry and dirty with wet and wild. If that ain't a sweet ass combination, then I sure as hell don't know what is. Now aside from those tastes, we also have the flavors of the meats and the noodles mixing and mingling with everything else. Key takeaway is this pancake is oishi to the motherfucking max. Now apparently this ain't just any old Japanese pancake, this right here is a Hiroshima style okonomiyaki. The noodles inside make it Hiroshima style, it's the first time I ever had a pancake like this and I gotta say, it's real fucking nice. Anyway, after I polished off that bad boy, the pancake maestro came by and gave me a mandarin orange and a shot glass. That's a pretty buck wild dessert idea right there. So I slammed that shot glass back and I gotta say, that was a nice end to an incredible meal. So now that I temporarily satisfied my wild animalistic hunger, I cruised on around Nara looking for some cultural action. Supposedly they got some Japanesey temples around these parts. So the main goal was to check out one of these temples, but man oh man, I'm getting waylaid over here by some kawaii as fuck deer. Nice fucking deer right there. Look at these deer, they're just cruising around in wild untamed packs. That's pretty heartwarming, almost brings a tear to my eye. Anyway, I looked at my map and apparently there's some kind of sick ass shrine called Kasuga Shrine, so I headed on toward that bad boy. I was seeing a lot of these Japanesey pillar type things. I don't know what the hell they are. I guess it must be some kind of Eastern thing. So I followed those pillars and eventually I got to a stairway leading to Kasuga Shrine. It's getting pretty Japanesey over here. I mean, I ain't no architectural expert or anything, but that right there is a pretty nice building in my humble opinion. Now Japan's got temples and shrines. What's the difference? Well, let me put it to you real simple like. A shrine is for worshipping Shintoism, a temple is for worshipping Buddhism. Got it? Now as far as the exact differences between the two religions, I don't know the exact details. In simple terms, Buddhism came from abroad and Buddhism has one god. Shintoism is from Japan and Shintoism has many gods, Kapish. Whatever the differences between shrines and temples, one thing's for sure, every time I visit shrines, they're markedly more buck wild. I mean, take this place for example, it seems to be arranged all nice and aesthetic-like. We got some sweet ass lanterns popping off left and right in this mother. I figure whoever designed this place deserves a nice reward, a real nice reward. I mean, something about the way they designed this shrine has improved my life and touched my heart. On top of that, even though the shrine is closed at night, they have a room where you can see how the lanterns look in the dark. Shit's getting pretty artistic around here, we got a wide variety of lanterns on display. Anyway, strange as it may sound, somehow, some fucking way, I became hungry yet again. Maybe it was from all that walking I did, or maybe it was from aesthetic overload. Whatever the reason, I figured I deserved to eat one more meal, just one more. 
Now I heard that Nara was famous for a special kind of sushi, so I decided to go on the hunt for that bad boy. Apparently it's called Kaki no Hazushi and it's basically sushi wrapped in persimmon leaves. Word around the campfire is this sushi technique came from ancient times. They wrapped the sushi in the persimmon leaf to help preserve the sushi. Supposedly those leaves have some kind of antibacterial properties to them. That seems all well and nice, but these days we got refrigerators, baby, so I think these things are a tad obsolete, although they do look quite nice. I mean, just take a look at all these types of sushi they got in this brochure over here. They're looking oishi to the motherfucking max. Looks like they got even more varieties of sushi that don't even involve persimmon leaves. This is a pretty nice brochure. A life-enhancing brochure. Anyway, I got me some of these Kaki no Hazushis over here, so I figure I'll give these bad boys a go. So I opened up the case, took out one of those puppies, and started unwrapping it. I'll tell ya, unwrapping a Kaki no Hazushi one-handed ain't exactly the easiest task in the world, that's for damn sure. So after I got that thing unwrapped, it looked to me like a normal piece of sushi, albeit compressed to the max. Anyway, looks good, smells good, it's glistening in the light, so I decided to jam that bad boy into the soy sauce and start chowing down on that puppy like a wild man. I dipped that rice directly into the soy sauce just the way I like it. And wow, a surprising taste. Surprisingly ordinary, I might say. Ordinary, if not slightly inferior to normal sushi. Overall, I'd say no dice on this meal. It ain't worth writing home about, you best be sticking to the Hiroshima Okonomiyaki instead. Anyway, if you want to see some more buck wild action in Japan, then feel fucking free to check out some of my other videos. I've got a video on hunger crazed deer in Nara, Japan, and I've got an old classic about 3D anime tit mouse pads in Tokyo, Japan. I got the links in the description box. And as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.